this way something that we've talked about quite a lot is the adaptation and being able to make decisions on the fly and change things up is very important um, and that is the stamp of a, a good team and a, and a well experienced team but we are going to be jumping straight into border now uh, let's have a look and see what these map bands have in store for us yeah what do you think the operator bands are going to be through here yeah, so let's see how it does go down. As you see, the glass band coming through here for the stream. So, despite the fact that glass wasn't even played at all, they will still ban it out. I think the glass is a little bit more powerful here on border, though, especially for a box take. If you want to play the glass very, very aggressively. Yeah, Glass can certainly be a powerful operator, like you say. We've not seen him picked the last few times that he has been available, but for border, um, he does bring a lot of value. An interesting ban of the dock will be there. I actually really like that because we saw Aces play quite a lot of Dockerby uh, during their match on Coastline against Empire. So they may have been looking at that and looking at how good Aces is there. And they may just ban it out just because they don't want to deal with that here, especially on border. Mirror going to get banned out. It's a pretty standard ban coming out from Vitality. I think that Lestream are probably going to ban out the Echo. They could ban out the Maestro though. No. I actually really like that. That's a really good target ban coming out. Because, as we said, Vitality played the Clash way better than Lestream did. Yeah, they certainly did. And it, I like it because it kind of removes the distraction of Clash being there to be picked. Because some of the Clash play we saw was a little bit questionable. Some of the Clash play that we saw was very good. But by removing it from the equation within the map bands, it's going to force the teams to pick different operators. And it does, of course, mean that both Echo and Maestro are going to be available. Yeah, Echo and Maestro are both left available. That's kind of interesting, but I don't think the Maestro is going to be too much of an issue just because, you know, there's Zofia and Ash both available. So it shouldn't be too bad to take out those Maestro cams. You've got plenty of stuff to deal with it. But, but at the same time, I think the Echo is going to be a big problem here for Vitality because last second pushes combined with the fact you're not bringing IQ in most rounds, that is going to just devastate you. Echo is an operator that the value is just incredibly high in those final few seconds. And like you say, if Uno, has managed, if Uno manages to keep his drones alive for long enough with no IQ being brought out, we've not seen a whole lot of IQ this evening uh, between these two teams. Anyway, we've seen a couple of rounds, but I think, like you say, it's going to prove so, so valuable. I really like what they're doing there, reinforcing the triple. Um, it's just going to allow them to keep good control of offices which it, it's really, offices are seen as quite an important place when you're going to start attacking onto B site. Uh, you know, something we talk about often, you're going to want to take good control of offices as an attacker, good control of CCTV, and then be able to push on through and try and execute your plan onto archive and armory, the two objectives. So investing that utility over in offices just really removes it, uh, it from being like a freebie for the attackers. It definitely does, but we're going to move through into round number one. And the action phase here for Vitality beginning on the attack here on border. As I said, you know, Vitality, this is their map pick, but I really think the stream is going to come out the better team here. But you can't quite say that for certain. Vitality might have a few interesting things up their sleeve. As you said, they have already played it once during the qualifier. Yeah, I mean, the stream are well on the way now. They've had a good show in this evening. They've played four maps and they've won two of them so far um, so they've got to be pretty pleased with that as a, as a result so far this evening moving in onto border they're going to look to want to close this out they're not really going to want to take this to a third map um, and I, I think that's going to be reflected in the way that we see them play now you can see there that rx is just going to be making his way over to main armory wall and uh, making sure that all the static cams have gone out of the way first two hard breaches available so but you'd usually see the Thermite being deployed on there, and I think they're just trying to avoid any sort of bandit trick there by putting both of them on at the same time, opening up into CCTV, and all of a sudden RX has found himself in quite an open situation. Fortunately for him, there's going to be no defenders challenging behind half wall, and he's just going to be allowed to, you know, figure out what he's going to do from here, make his way on into the site if he so wishes, but there's going to be plenty of utility there from the stream to deny any push. The lack of flashbangs here is kind of confusing coming out from the box, although I do kind of understand it, but oh my god. Ace is going to go for the run out there, but does immediately get picked up by the Claymore from Spark. That's not good at all. We'll see Lestream in a bit of a 5v4 at the moment. They've lost the Jaeger, so it's not a massive loss coming out from them, but that is still a man advantage to Vitality. We're starting to make good progress. They've opened up the Armory Wall, and this is going to be looking pretty good for them to try and go for their Execute, but they don't have any smokes, they don't really have anything to actually get control of the site. I would really like to see a Ying at some point from them, honestly. 
Uh, yeah, Ying, Bomb maybe even a book. We saw some great uh, grenade throws yesterday on Latin America, some sort of pre-decided spots, and you understand where the grenade's going to land and go. They could be very handy. Of course, we've got the Sledge, who has got the grenades as well, but, you know, the ability to open up the floor in Armoury is something that really can't be overlooked. And it looks as though RX is just trying to wait and see if he can find anything, but uh, ultimately... There's no reason for the stream to start peeking anything now. RX does find the head of Hicks. What a fantastic kill that was. Hicks just rotating through, losing the smoke in the final 30 seconds. Not a good thing at all. The plan will almost certainly be coming down anytime soon. Alpha very well placed to deny with a C4, however, as the push does come in from the main door. Yokai drones are going to be deployed as well, which is all going to aid in this last second push from Vitality. Alpha there picking up his first kill. Is he going to find the second? C4 throw comes out. Doesn't quite land it shots bibu on the window is going to pick up one see uh, you can hear the yokai drones now are able to deny this plan and the plan will not stick purely down to the yokais very well held there from the stream but he learned where it was right at the end <laughs> so good enough but yeah there we go vitality again with such a last second push coming through for them and he was so lucky that the nitro missed because putting the nitro down right in the front there next to the locker I think the Looker actually does take a little bit of the brunt of the damage from the Nitro there. And Thermite can actually just walk right back and just avoid the Nitro kill entirely. And he can just keep going for that plant. They did really well though, Lestream, to just wait to reveal the Echo Drone. To not reveal it immediately. Um, because a lot of teams will, you know, they'll see one of their teammates take a good gunfight. And they'll be like, oh, I'll just Echo the guy he's against a gunfight against. No, don't do that. You let the gunfight play out. Then you decide if you need to reveal your Echo Drone or not. You've got to use the Yokai Drones Defender, at the last possible second. Yeah, um, really powerful utility. Yeah, it's the mark of a good player that knows when the plant has started to go down and can wait until right until the plant is about to complete before using the drone because it can just waste so, so much time in those dying seconds. Attack and it's just about understanding the operator fully. We've seen the IQ be picked this time from Bibu, obviously not wanting to deal with those Yokai Drones again. However, Uno this time, going to be on the Valkyrie, so he's still going to be very susceptible, or his, uh, his Black Eyes, should I say, is still going to be very susceptible to the uh, IQ pick, of course, but not quite investing so heavily in the Yokai Drone Denial this time. Just going to be looking toward Maestro and Smoke for that. Yeah, he definitely is going to be able to. We're getting into round number two here. We're seeing how it's going to go down. Attackers so stream are going to start Attackers their second defense. Opting to not bring the Echo this time, but they are going to be bringing the Maestro, which I do enjoy. This is uh, definitely going to be a very interesting round coming out. What do we think of the lineup here for Vitality? I like the lineup. I think it's fairly strong. I'd maybe prefer to see the book over the sledge. I know that we've talked about this a little bit. Um, book just provides that very, very quick opening of a hell of a lot of the floor. We've really not seen all too much sledge play on border in uh, in the previous games that we've looked at during these qualifiers. And uh, book tends to win out, but you know they're working off some uh, Valkyrie camp information, no doubt. Does make a nice run out onto Spark. Valkyrie camp is, however, going to be picked out. Spark going to be pretty low hit points after that engagement. Not really what you want what you want to be going into in the first 40 or so seconds of the round. Yeah, you know, doing quite a lot of damage with that as well. And as Bibu choose to move around on this east balcony. I really thought he was gonna get picked then. Like someone was just gonna wide peek out because I knew you know was still in archives. So we'll see how this goes down as Bibu gonna move all the way up onto Fountain and to see what he can do. Vitality have pretty good control, but that is not how it starts off. That is really poor info coming out there as Rise is just allowed to peek out the backside of Fountain and does take him down. Vitality, you're already losing their IQ. This is not good for them at all. The stream there, not really giving any, uh, you know, not giving any map control up at all. Ace is getting heavily pressured now in CCTV, but Rise is able to play off that as well as, uh, as a little bit of a distraction. Ace is going to, however, really reveal his location there by just putting some pre-fire shots down. Spark will pick up that kill onto the Maestro, and Ace is, is no doubt going to get pushed. We've got a guy pushing from break room as well. But he, do oh, I thought he managed to pick up that kill there, but it was actually Alpha that picked up the kill onto Spark. Ace is, however, going to go down in that scenario. So effective three versus three now, moving into this final minute of the round. Upstairs control has largely been gained now by Vitality, but they've spent a lot of time doing it, and they've lost quite a bit of utility along the way as well. Still plenty of denial in the hands of the stream. Nitro Cell on Uno there, three Toxic Bays, and uh, possibly even a Nitro Cell on Alpha as well. Yeah, looking pretty good now for the stream to try and deny the plank to go down. 
And again, Vitality don't really have the control that they need to try and put this plant down. Sledge ought to really be up here to try and open up vertical holes. And Alrex should be in the site and trying to go and protect this plant. But oh no, he just have recharges. I did forget about that. That's actually really smart now. So now the book can sorry, the sledge can actually go below or can actually help them with opening the vertical holes here. But they do have control of the connector. Now all that Vitality need to do is get control of the ventilation room. But oh no! Alvin gets caught out by Oh my god, that's so bad. The fact that the shotgun's there and he's trying to play the vertical play, but not getting the kill is not good. But Uno will strike back, he gets the kill, but instantly traded out. It's all down to Hicks in a 1v1. It looks like BB will try and sorry, Bridge will try and put down the planter. And he will be able to do so successfully, but no, Hicks does take him down. Easy as that, Lestream will take round number two. They're looking very, very good here on border so far. Vitality, just a little bit too slow with these attacks, it seems again. Slightly slow with the attack, and I know that you commented on Hibana being up there with the breach in charge. I'd have still like to have seen Sledge up there, because I feel like he could have opened so much more of the floor in a much shorter period of time, um, and, and really assisted in that. The trades did start to fly out. It comes down to the pump shotgun again on Hicks, and he does make it do the good work. Um, so can't really take anything away from the stream there. They've picked up two really solid rounds back-to-back -back on defense. We're going to now go over to Bathroom and Tellers. And they're going to show us what they've got over here as well. Maybe even... Oh, I thought we were going to see the Echo 6 pick there. But, you know, just going to opt for the Maestro, although he hasn't confirmed it yet. Maybe still a little bit undecided. Yeah, definitely. So, moving to round number three, we can see the stream are uh, going to be looking pretty good for themselves. Attack I wouldn't like to mention, just on that last round, you mentioned the Havana maybe not being upstairs. I don't mind her being upstairs because she opened up the connector. She have vents. She's opening up the connector to server, so they can't go through it all. You post someone front door to watch the rotate, which is where the smoke was playing, and then you have someone on the window who hops in and plants the diffuser. That way, they have all the angles covered, and they don't need to push or peek anything. But at this point, they didn't have that setup at all, and they just had one by ones everywhere. Yeah, like you say, there wasn't enough. You know, the Hibana was working well on her own, but I don't think that the team was working well enough around it to be able to, you know, really close that round out. And it was uh, it was Hicks that was the slippery defender in the end that did. Uh, enable himself to be able to get away um, and pick up that final kill. A lot of utility being invested upstairs this time. Uh, obviously a very important area to control of the map is going to be your office and fountain area along with archives when you're looking to defend downstairs bathroom tellers. It can be such a difficult bomb site to get a plant off because you just need so much control of upstairs and of the bomb site to be able to even get in as an attacker uh, with no smokes on the board of vitality. I think they're going to have a pretty tough job here. Yeah, definitely, definitely will. Vitality are going to move in pretty quickly this time, however, getting all the way onto this east stairs and seeing what exactly they can do about all of this. But I don't like Nade coming out here. Oh, no, sorry. He's flashbanging over the archway, so they can't bandit trick. But if he's going to do that, he needs to start opening the wall at the same time. But there we go. Nades are going to come through from Sneaky. And this is great one actually coming out for Vitality. And there we go. Beautiful. That's a very, very good grenade toss. Um, he's going to have taken out the bandit there. That's the wall open in very short space of time. And they've not spent too much utility on it either. It's going to make offices a very difficult area to operate in. Rise will have the option of being able to drop back down onto the site. Although the site isn't really when you, where you want to be when office control has been given up because the, uh, the sledge there is just going to be able to make short work of the floor and make it very uncomfortable to operate down there indeed. Rise just opts into player's life now. There's still a lot of places that can be uh, that can be held from within offices at this point. Uh, there's no real need to move out all too quickly. Halfway through the round, and it isn't looking too bad for the stream, despite Vitality managing to get the wall open relatively quickly. No, it isn't, but I feel like Aces could have played that much better. The flashbangs are coming down. He should know at that point he's about to get needed because Vitality be bringing a sledge every single round. You should know that you're about to get needed here. It's not a good bandit to try and do. He should rotate out at that point or try and play it a lot safer. But yeah, I don't I don't like the way that he played that. But one minute left to go on the clock. We'll see how it does go down. Round number three, not looking too good for Vitality. They're wasting quite a lot of time to try and get a lot of control. But they do have the upstairs control and they do have Sledge on the board, so this could go very well for them. And there we go, a flurry of kills come through, a double kill coming out from Habana above. Now he has upstairs control, and now he has the breach charges as well into that pocket, so he can make good use out of the vertical play. Smokes are going to come down, and there we go. This is looking very much better for the stream, as Uno takes down Brid and turns it into a 4v2. 
takes with the impacts, actually. So he's going to be able to open up a new angle for himself. You know, with a great angle of his own. And there's still smokes available. So plenty of plant denial coming out here for the stream. All they have to do is just hold on tight. Try to left to go, and the Maestro camp is going to get destroyed. However, Uno still playing very nice around it. Just get another kill. That's Diffuser down. Uno alone in a 3v1. But all he has to do is just deny this Diffuser going down, and he can still win it. He's not going to pick it up correctly, and they are going to recover the Diffuser and try and plant it down. All he has to do is just deny it, and he can win the round, but he's not going to be able to peek out too aggressively. And the Diffuser does go down successfully. Now, it's in a 3v1. It's a post plant situation. Peeks the all the way into the waiting room. Oh, what a shot from Uno! He takes out one, but instantly traded out by Spark. Vitality take round number three. That's a really shame, a real big shame for Uno because he went to reload the Alder at that point, and I feel like he probably had enough rounds in the magazine to be able to, you know, pick up that final kill. Uh, you know, taking your taking your eye off the diffuse at that point, you've kind of really took it, taking your eye off the ball and it being able to be picked up and then replanted in a safer location for Vitality. That was what won in the round. Great initiative from Vitality to be able to pick that diffuser up uh, and take it to where it was safer to plant. All all so close for the stream, but uh, Vitality are going to pick up a round, and I think it's a round that they really needed at that point because it was really starting to flow in the favour of the stream. Uh, but moving in now, two to one in favour of the stream yeah definitely looking very good for the stream indeed they're looking pretty powerful on borders defenses and i did say this is definitely a map that favors their play style a little bit more than it favors vitalities maybe vitality have something up their sleeve here rx is he's six and two right now i didn't even realize he's dropping so many kills here but that habana entry has been working out quite well for him he's going to switch around to the capital however we we'll to see how that goes down. They move into round number four. And see stream with an armory defense yet again. Now remember, this actually came down to a great echo play. And I think the Vitality do remember that quite well because Bibu is picking up the IQ. Yeah, the IQ is going to be a really important pickup this time from Vitality. Um, although, IQ is going to have to expose, you know, Bibu's going to have to expose himself enough on the IQ to be able to take out these drones. He's going to get a good idea as to where they're being played, uh, which can always assist in where the thatch grenades are going to, the thatch MPs are going to get thrown, which kind of helps disable them. Um, but ultimately, it's going to be down to Uno to be able to hide his drones well enough. They did give away the location last time as they did win on the uh, on the denial, so I'm sure that all of the members of Vitality are pretty aware of where the drone was played last time. I'm sure that Uno's got plenty of other sneaky spots up his sleeve and we will have to see where they come out if it comes down to a plant denial situation. But first, Vitality are going to have to take a little bit of map control and just work the way in. Maybe try and open up that main wall. It could be a little bit more difficult this time because they haven't got the Habana because RX has switched out onto the Capital. Yeah, but flashbangs are going to come down. Hopefully you'll be able to get this open, but he's going to flash himself, unfortunately. But they do get the Ormary wall open. Should be going for a box take fairly soon. But yeah, as you mentioned, the Echo is still up on the board. As long as b survives, it shouldn't be that bad. But just the threat of... And that is a really good place for an Echo Drone as well. Just the threat of it being there is really going to slow down Vitality unless they actually pick it up early. This is actually a great opportunity for b to go below at this point. It's the uncertainty, isn't it, of, of where the Echo Drone is going to be being played. Quite like where Hicks is trying to play here, just on top of this server stack. He's getting ready for the push that is undoubtedly going to come. Alpha there is going to lose a heck of a lot of hit points, just challenging out onto the armory wall. As, uh, as Bibu is getting himself pretty nicely positioned outside, like you say, looking to maybe come in through main door, come in downstairs and try to take out any Yokai Drones that he can find. Yeah, and you should be able to get it off pretty well. I mean, he's got a decent amount of info on what's going down. He's convinced that someone's going to hop out AC, and he will guess correctly. And Uno, again with that AC jump out, is going to go down. But most importantly, that's the echo off the board. That's massive for Vitality. Uno, why would you do that? Uno's been playing really well. He's been getting pretty lucky on some runouts in previous games. He's had a run out on this game as well, which did manage to get a lot of hit points off. But to run out as the echo at this point, moving into the last minute, it's just too big to ignore. You just can't be throwing away that much utility. Hicks is looking for a refrag here, and he is going to find it onto Bibu. Very nice angle there, but ultimately Hicks is going to be a little bit out of the fight now as the push is going to come through. Smoke grenades are going to be deployed. Asphyxiating bolts are going to fly in. The smoke toss comes out, but it isn't deep enough to do any damage. The plant will go down. RX is going to flick round and get a kill onto Aces. The diffuser has gone down. Four versus three now. Hicks is going to have to make his way up main stairs if he's looking to retake the this site and it's down to the members of um, 
Bloodless Dream now to be able to try and pick up some kills. Rise is going to start things off with a kill of his own. A very low hit point at this point. Bridge is going to pick up the kill onto Hicks. All now going to be in the hands of Rise. He's got the SMG 11 and a Dream at this point. Not a lot of time left to pick up these kills and get the diffuse off. So he's going to have to make something happen. Sneaky is going to finally find the kill. And that's going to be a round on the board for Vitality. Yeah, much better done from Vitality. But I, I just hated the fact that Uno did that run out. If he hadn't done it, I feel like they could have either brought it back and not allowed the diffuse it to go down in such a powerful spot. Or they could have at least, you know, gone for a good retake. But not having that echo available and only having the info from it. That's horrible. I think there was a massive mistake coming out from Uno. That was the, the shifting point in the round where as soon as BB got that kill, it was like, I've just killed Echo. Push, push, push. There's nothing that's going to deny you now. There's going to be some smoke grenades, but the plants, there's nowhere to plant to avoid the smoke toss and stuff. So it really just was the tipping point of that round. And it was such an important pick from BB. Great game sense to know that someone was going to be jumping out of there. I can only think it was good intel off a drone, um, but he really acted on it very well, hit his shots. And like you say, it was enough to bring okay, Vitality to their second the round. That's very reminiscent of like a Gumphy play. If you ever go against Gumphy in ranked, and you go on like cafe or something, He'll always have his Echo Drones on like, the windows above and you'll put the Echo Drone right above it and you'll just peek constantly off of it. All you have to do is just wait for him to peek, just pre-fire. You'll kill him very easily. So there you go. If you're against Gumpy and Ranked, that's all you have to do. Because he will play the Echo and he'll peek off of it. But yeah, losing losing the Echo that badly, that's just not something that can happen. But we are going to move through into round number five. We're going to see another upstairs defense coming out from the stream. No echo this time coming out from them. It looks like Uno wants to play a little yeah, bit more aggressively on the pulse this time instead, which is a much more traditional role for him as well. Yeah, the echo maybe not just working out for him. We've seen Uno, like you say, he picked up nearly 30 kills in the first series against Empire. He's maybe just not wanting to take himself out of the fight too much and play too conservatively as the echo. So the pulse and the UMP are going to be what he's going to be opting for this round. Maybe just trying to get a couple more kills on the board than he has been doing. And that run out could have just come out of a bit of frustration of just trying to make something happen and getting a little bit too thirsty for a kill. And we said this before as well about Lestream's playstyle is maybe they don't play as well together and they don't have as many strats as the other European teams. I mean, they have plenty of comp experience and they're all great fraggers as well, especially Uno and Aces. I feel like they rely on that a little bit too much though and a team like Vitality is going to punish them for being way too over-aggressive. Empire certainly did as well. And that, over, that, that aggression needs to be very well considered because aggression can be a very powerful thing. Sometimes it's the initiative you need and you need to take that aggression. But other times, there's times where it really just isn't going to pay off and it is just going to hurt you to do so. You know, getting himself prone underneath the recently opened hit Barna hole, he is going to drop back down into Tellers and just play his life out a little bit longer. It was a bit of an aggressive stance for him to be taking there. And Alpha is still stuck upstairs in office just with a bandit in his hand, just ready to try and hold this corner a little bit longer. The push a little bit slower this time coming out from Vitality. Thermite Charge now going to go off onto the wall. Alpha's going to take the opportunity to peek. He's not all too far away from getting the kill, but Brid is just holding the angle, waiting for him to do so. More utility going to be getting deployed, and that's certainly office control now for Vitality. I can't understand why he did that, because he has a Nitro, and if he had done that and he had barbed wire down, I wouldn't have minded it so much, but you've just lost a huge amount of utility again because the members of the stream who are over peaking were getting shut down by Vitality. There was no reason for him to peak that because he could have wasted so much more time and possibly got a Nitro kill sitting where he already was. I get that he figures he could be eventually pushed out, but that was really dumb from Alphama. Yeah, and like you say, there's not all too much denial left on the team of the stream. Uh, one Alpha, uh, sorry, one. Um one Nitro Cell in the hands of Uno and obviously the Maestro cameras as well. But it's not even like there's an Echo Drone to kind of fall back on. Brid is going to look to get open the wall as Sneaky gets a kill onto Hicks. So even the Maestro Evil Eyes are now not going to be a factor. Brid's going to be able to open the wall. The plant certainly going to be coming down any second now as we do reach the 30 second mark. Sorry, 30 seconds left of the round. Pulse has still got a bit of a job to do here, though. There's definitely potential for a Nitro kill. There's definitely potential to try and deny this plant to a degree. But I'm not sure if it's going to be enough with only two guns on the site. I don't know if he's better off redeploying himself now, as it is, a, you know, the team of Vitality are very much aware that he's here. 
Yeah, Uno is going to still be below. 10 seconds left to go on the clock. And oh my yeah, god, Uno is going to go down. This may have been the saving grace. Aces does take down Bebo, however, in return. This is looking so much better. Ryze going to wide peek out of it. Does not go down just yet. But Aces from the return on the East says he wins the round by taking down Brid. Oh my god. That was almost a disaster for the stream. Losing Uno like that so early on, that was almost that was almost round one for Vitality. But Aces is all the way off on the East stairs. He peeks it out using the own triple wall that they opened up against them and getting a great kill there. Aces was an amazing clutch through to save the round for the stream, but they should really get punished a little bit more for doing things like that. Vitality should have a flank watch drone there. Like, what's happening? You can't rely on that individual play, um, but, you know, really well done to Aces. The target acquisition there and the fact that he knew who to go for, as a because he could have got any of those kills. He I was very he, well played. I think he was just lucky, honestly. I think that... I think he's... At least give it to him that he went for the player that was okay, crouched. Okay, yeah, sorry, I, I took it all back. Ace is actually the smartest player to ever play Siege, and you exactly have had that. No, but you? if, so, if you know that, if you've heard that the plant is going down, and there's three members, attack. there's three members of the attacking team. One of them's crouched, and two of them are stood up. You're gonna go for the guy that's crouched. I, yeah. I, you can't argue with his target acquisition no, there. He's I, I picked do, the right target. He's prioritized his kills, and it's brought the round. Because I think at that point, if Vitality plant. They were probably in a really good position to hold that post plan. Yeah, I'm just trying to think about how that even happened though, because Aces is on the east stairs. He already gets a kick there, so they know he's around there somewhere. They're in sight planting. Everyone from Vitality is in the site. They that, know the pulses are downstairs anymore, so they can all play there. They that, already know that smoke is in the armory. All they need to do is just watch behind, and no one was. That's the problem at that point. I think that Vitality overcommitted to the site, and they didn't need to throw as many bodies onto the site as they did. Had they just had somebody holding back in offices, it maybe would have been a, bit, a little bit different. That's obviously something that we can say sat here with you know hindsight. But I think, yeah, a little bit of overcommitting to the site there, it, uh, it just caused them to fall short because they were very close and they did deserve that round. The way that they took offices was really, really good. I still feel like, uh, like Uno was playing below that entire time. And, you know, he's playing that really smart. He's waiting for the plant to start going down before he uses Nitro, as he's done before on Conchula as well. He was playing that very smart. But he gets killed through the vertical play. That is not Vitality playing well. That is Uno making a big mistake there. Because really, Vitality should have to go downstairs to clear out a pulse. Yeah, they definitely should. And we obviously, we lost Bandit fairly early on as well on triple, making that aggressive run. Well, not aggressive run out, but that aggressive sort of prone as the Exothermic was going off as well. So yeah, maybe um, maybe it was a fact that Vitality just capitalized on the couple of mistakes that Lestream made. Ooh, good shots there coming in onto Bibu. And Legion does actually manage to get away with his life as well. Just poking a couple of points of damage there, managing to get a goo mine out there. And with the hatch open, they're almost certainly going to be able to drop to the safety of the site. They've wasted over half the round at this point. It's a great job done from the Romers. Now they're just going to try and concentrate on holding this vertical play because it's going to come through from Sneaky. He's got Sledge's Hammer and he's definitely going to want to start using it very soon in offices and armory to open up some lines of sight and make it uncomfortable to operate down there. Ace is just rotating back off main stairs. Just making sure that he's available to deny this plant if it does come to that. He's obviously going to have some evil eyes in the site that are going to prove very useful. Yeah, they've definitely been doing very well with it indeed so far, but it's going to be Vitality's final attack. I honestly think that the stream's playstyle is going to work much better for them on a border attack. But we're not going to see that just yet as we get through into the final minute of random sticks. We can see Sledge is getting open this floor a little bit. He's going to get so lit up already. There's so much aggression coming out here. But it's not going to work out for them just yet. Sneaky tries to pick up the Legion on the cross, but doesn't manage to pick him up just yet. As he rotates all the way around, we see Breach Charge is going down yet again, coming out from the Habana. But we're not seeing com much commitment coming out from Vitality just yet as the site. But it's 30 seconds. You need to start pushing. You need to start thinking about how this plant is going to go down. Most Sledge is going to get open up onto the ceiling here. They're going to drone all the way into the bathroom, but BB finds the first kill of the round with 20 seconds left to go on the clock. Alpha goes down, Hicks goes down as well to BB, making a great entry through Passport here as Ryze will shut it all down. Brick goes through and he will go down for it. And it's going to be a 3v4. Oh my god, BB finds another kill. Aces goes down, but Ryze with the pistol whip finally finishes off Spark. And now it's going to be a 3v2. Uno and Ryze left remaining to deny the plant going down. The fuse will get recovered. Ryze shuts it down, but he will win the round. Oh my god. So much aggression coming out from the stream. And Vitality just can't deal with it. 
Vitality running out of time yet again, just leaving the push too late. They took good upstairs control, but it's just the way that Lustream are able to still harass from below through the vertical play uh, and a little bit of light roaming on the ground floor at that stage. It really did make the difference. Lustream are well placed to take this map now. Four rounds to two, moving on to attack. We've seen Lustream attacking really well, you know, like we've said, relying quite heavily on their ability to pick up gunfights. And I think that that's something that we're going to continue to see here now. I think this is going to benefit them so much more on the attack because you saw when they're on defense, they're getting picked so early. And it happened as well on Empire where there's a lot of members of Lustream who were peaking for no reason and getting picked in one-on-one -on -one fights. They're not letting themselves get traded. They're not playing each other off well. Alpha are playing in uh, sort of Canadian area in the offices in that little sandwich area. That was a perfect example of that. Uno, again, jumping out of AC and trying to go for the kill. Another great example of that, where members of the stream are getting picked way too early in 1v1 fights when they know who they're playing against. And they've won these rounds purely based on how long Vitality is taking on these attacks and how they're waiting until the very last minute, the last 30 seconds, to just push. So... The stream don't need to be as aggressive as the beam, but I do think that part of this is the fact that they've just had a best of three series against Empire. They just want to close it out. They want to close it out. Empire brought a lot of aggression into their gameplay, and so did Lestream, and I think both teams played off it very well against each other. There was a lot of really important first picks that came out for both Empire and Lestream in that game, and it seemed to be that whoever got the first pick usually went on to win the round purely because of how much both teams were relying on that you know decent entry fragging and picking up a kill early on. It's going to be no different here. We've got Uno again on the Ash, just putting some shots that down through onto 90. Sometimes you do see that reinforced and it can be a, a valuable reinforcement to use. It does just avoid any sort of pre-fire shots on the way in. Uno, of course, rocking the Invitational skin again. And uh, is that a sign of things to come? Are they going to be able to pick up these next couple of rounds and close this one out? He wants another skin. He doesn't want to, no one wants to watch a tournament as a spectator. They want to play in it, of course. And this is uh, looking pretty good so far for the stream. I will say, though, that Uno's performance hasn't been as powerful as it was on Empire. Is that because of who they were playing against? Or is it that the stream have tightened up their attacks a little bit more? It could be that we've had a bit of a break um, and they've, you know, sort of got themselves together a little bit and they've figured out what they're going to do against this team of Vitality. There could be some differences in the way that they've prepared for this. So I think he may have maybe just went a little bit cold and then obviously coming in onto this border map, they came into one on, 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 uh, on defense first. Ooh, Ace is there with a nice wide peek out onto Sneaky. That's an important kill for them to get. Uh, Sneaky looked like he should have picked up that kill all day, but Ace is no, with the peek's advantage there, is able to pick that entry kill up. Uno there, swiftly being able to deal with an evil eye, but he actually misses the evil eye opens and he's still able to shoot it. That's a big oversight from the Maestro in that circumstance. There's no need to open that and just get a couple of points of damage and lose all of that information that you've, uh, that you've lost there by losing the evil eye out in offices. Yeah, that, that was a massive mistake coming out there from the Maestro. You should have just waited to see if the evil line had actually gotten destroyed. Because if you open up, you're doing really minimal damage, honestly. But there we go. Nades are going to start to come out to try and destroy the other Maestro cam. Did it miss? Yeah, it missed. Again, the, the Maestro is getting very, very aggressive with this. It's doing a bit of damage here. But that's not good. Spark is on a sliver of HP. Now as Alpha Moon moves into the site, he takes down Braid. Uno moving up right next to him. And he's going to go for the pre fire Soon shoot a dead body though. Flashbangs are going to go out. And Bias takes out RWXD. Uh, RXD, sorry. As Vivu is the last one remaining. He will take out Ryze. He does have upstairs control. But the Fuser will go down. And we will try and see what he can do. But this is looking really, really good for the stream right now. Bibu is going to really have his work cut out for him. He's going to move through. He's on one of the better fraggers on Vitality, so he should be able to get some kills. There we go. Uno going to go down as well. Bibu is fine too. He's going to have to find three more. It's easy as that. He's going to find these gunfights as they come. Push it all the way through. Going to go for the free fires and reload. Just take a breather and push all the way through. Diffuser slowly going to do its work though as he tries to push into the bathroom, the area. Oh my god, no, the Capital Bot comes down as well. This is not looking good at all. He tries to peek out, tries to find the fight, but Aces won't let him have it. He'll get taken down on the stream, takes round number seven in a pretty dominating fashion. It was a very difficult situation there for BB to find himself in. One versus five, he quickly made it a one versus four, so he was, you know, he was doing his best from the get-go. 
but it just wasn't quite enough. I think the members of Vitality just fell too quickly on the site when the push did come through from Lestream. Um, and that's Lestream winning three rounds in a row there. That's pretty big for them momentum-wise. Another one they're going to be on to match point and another one they're going to take the series. So I think coming on to attack now for Lestream is really important because they do benefit from these attacking rounds. Definitely, definitely. So... We will see how exactly it's going to go through. As you see, a bathroom teller's defense coming out from Vitality. Rather surprisingly, Lestream looking in a very good situation. As said, that I think that border attack is going to benefit Lestream's playstyle more than it's going to benefit Team Vitality. We've definitely seen that being represented in the scoreline right now. And you can see that Uno is only on 5 of 5 right now. Uno's got a lot of uh, a lot of gas left in the tank, I think, for these attacking rounds. I think it's more the fact that Vitality haven't been letting Uno take as many one-on-one -on -one good fights as he was finding in the Empire matchup, because when two teams have a really similar playstyle, it just becomes a gunfighting constantly coming out between the two. But with Vitality, they have a very different playstyle to Empire. Yeah, they're definitely a little bit more, um, I don't know, strat-based, I think it maybe be the right phrase. Um, and that, that does seem to be shutting down Uno in his pushes just a little bit. But like we say, we've only seen him on attack for one round on border. Uno does tend to do a little bit better on attack because he's able to bring that aggression a bit more. The aggression on defense sometimes doesn't always work out for him. And uh, you can see there that he's probably going to be looking to get droned in upstairs pretty quickly now and try and take some control, maybe even with CCTV, and then move on to offices. Yeah, maybe he will do just that. Moving into round number eight, though, however, we're going to see exactly how it's going to go through as the stream. Taking a fairly similar lineup to what they were taking last time as well. And we've seen this a lot from the stream where they haven't really made that much adaptation in their roster lineup. I mean, Empire made far less roster adaptations, but they just try and they just make it work. There's no nades this oh sorry, there is nades this time on the books to try and aid this. But well, RXW is too preoccupied holding the hatch downstairs and the wall will get opened very, very quickly. That's not very good for the team members of Vitality because it's just going to allow a big line of sight and it's going to cut off a lot of rotations there. Rise well placed up on the roof to try and throw some grenades down. You can see him there bouncing them off the lantern. Not quite managing to hit his mark, but maybe doing some damage there onto Sneaky. Just going to jump in his drone again, see if there's uh, any other nades that he can find a spot for. But Uno is all the way in waiting room, opening up castle barricades, pushing on down into bathroom. Uno's fairly well established at this point. He's very exposed in where he is, but I think his teammates and the sort of pressure that they're applying elsewhere is just allowing him to be able to be this way. He's going to put some pre-fire shots out there. He doesn't quite manage to find his mark on Brib, but he will take some hit points and as he goes to try and find this kill yet again, but he's not really working off any information now. Going to rotate up the stairs and try and ensure this control of offices. Yeah, flashbangs are going to come out from below the castle here. I wonder what his plan is here exactly. He's waiting for his teammates to run around, I guess. But no, he's going to try and put down the flashes, and he's going to be opening up the office barricade here easy as it does come down. Vitality are starting to lose quite a lot of control here, and they do start to lose members as Hicks takes off the first one. BB goes down. And this is not looking too good at all for Vitality. Capital also coming through. Spark, however, is going to fight back. He takes down Higgs, and Aces finds one in return. And Aces finds a second one, and Alphama finds one. Alphama finds two. What? What just happened? Lestream just push all the way in. They find every single gunfight that they can take, and they just take the round. Easy as that. No one even moving into the site. Two quick double kills there from Aces and Alpha to close out that round. And this is it now. The streamer on match point. This is for all the marbles. They need to win this game if they do want to go to Invitationals, which at this point, I'm pretty sure that that's all they're going to be thinking of. The one round away, they've had a very convincing showing on border. If you're on Vitality now, what are you thinking to yourself? You're quite a few maps down at this point. Um, I think, honestly, just peak everything. Do what Orglis did in their SSG match where they were going down and they just kind of said, yeah, whatever, let's just try and take gunfights. But... Considering who you're against here as well, maybe that might not be the best strategy. Yeah, hyper aggression uh, when met with with hyper aggression can sometimes just come into uh, you know a heck of a lot of messy gunfights there. I don't think it'd be too bad from Vitality if they did so. They are going up to Armory now, which is somewhere that we haven't seen them defend just yet. But I'm not a hundred percent on the lineup. I think the Valk and the Pulse. Maybe we could have seen one of those switched out for a Maestro or or even an Echo. We did see. The stream put in the echo to very good work, and that did help them to win a good few of their defensive rounds. Um, so, not sure how that's going to play, and I think the echo could cause a lot of dis a lot of disturbance uh, for the stream's attack with the way that they do tend to push. They do tend to push all together. Yeah, they definitely do tend to push quite.
fight heavily together. And this is kind of what I was going on about where Uno isn't dropping as many frags, but he isn't finding as many gunfights either. So I don't necessarily blame him. I don't think that he's doing as, you know, he's not doing worse. It's just a different game. It is the mark of a good team though when you've got an operator that's known for frags or you've got a player that's known for frags and even though he's not getting them, the team is still winning and they're still doing well. It is, the, it is the mark of a good team in that there's multiple players on the team and they're not relying on any one individual performance. And there we go. We are going to see how it does go down. No echo coming out, of course, from Vitality. I'm not sure if I agree with that, but I mean, Echo and Maestro are both on the board here for Vitality and they've not picked either of them yet. No, and it's um, it's like I say, I'm not sure about the Valkyrie and the Pulse Pick. I think one of those could be switched out for an Echo or a Maestro, um, especially the Valk, because you're still going to get two cameras. You're still going to get two Evil Eyes. We saw one of the Valk cameras getting taken out very early. It's going to give you an indication as to where the push is coming from, but I feel like Pulse can do that largely with the Cardiac Sensor as well. We'll, uh, we'll, we will see how it plays out here. A little bit of a slower push maybe coming in from the stream. They're obviously feeling the pressure at this point, and they don't want to mess anything up. You know they're going to be taking out any bandit batches that he can and just narrowly missing out on that kill. He's going to put some good shots in, but the bars are not going to do him any favours. The distraction is enough, however, for the wall to be opened, and that's going to make it uncomfortable on the site for the remaining defenders upstairs. Ace is, meanwhile, pushing his way through customs. Maybe looking to go up onto either east stairs or main. We will have to see. Yeah, we will have to see that. Just about halfway into the round now on the stream, Looking pretty good to try and take this round, but they've got a lot of control and having aces down below here is such a powerful position because he could rotate on top of metal and he could go for a really good flank, but also he's down here with his electronics detector and he should be able to take quite a lot of those electronics off the board if they are a problem. But let's see, Capital Balls are going to come through. The stream's out their attack, but Spark shuts it down with a kill of his own. But a nice day coming out from Rise does manage to find his mark. But BB finds another one. There goes Uno from below. And now it's a 3v4. Not looking too good all of a sudden for the stream. They put down quite a lot of the utility, but they haven't really pushed off of it that well. They've still got asphyxiation bolts, but they don't have the smoke cover anymore. He's going to put a drone onto half He's going to lose someone there, but Rise is going to move all the way in. The Call didn't go out correctly, and Bridge is going to take him down. The Asphyxiation Bolt is going to get loaded up. It's a 3v1, all down to Alpha, but he can't find the kill onto Bridge. He takes him down, and Vitality take round number nine and keep themselves in this for one more round. What a disaster of a push coming out from the stream. They had everything they needed, but they didn't have the intel. No, you're, you're right. They didn't have a lot of intel. You could see there that the drone got destroyed pretty much at the same time as, uh, as the call would have been coming out, but at that point, it was too late. But... I don't know if that round's just coming a bit too late for Vitality as well, because Lestream's still on match point. Vitality have got a long way to go if they do want to look to take this map of border and take us to a third. I'm not sure if they've got it in the tank at this stage. We've seen them defend Armory very well, but it is the only defense we've seen them do very well at. Ventilation Workshop, it was a very good round for Lestream, and they pushed it very, very well. We're going to see a Monty. I think Ryze is just sick of it at this point, and he just wants to bring it in. Does he just want to close this out? Are we going to see a really nice Monty push now with Uno backing him up? I think so. I think so. I mean, without the book here, it's a little questionable, just because Ryze has been doing pretty well in the book so far, and he did get a really nice nade kill uh, during the previous round. So, maybe it's a little bit questionable not to hit the book here, although Lestream have been missing out on that kind of push potential, right? And Montaigne does allow you to have that. With us seeing quite heavy reliance on gun skill from the stream so far, they've got us to a point on border now, and they're obviously not going to want to throw this opportunity away. They're going to want to try and close this out as soon as possible. Do you think we could maybe be seeing something they've been trying to hide away? Yeah, Are we going to maybe see a little bit of a strategy here with the Monty coming out? Potentially, potentially. I mean, I feel like the only real pocket strat we've seen so far across the entire qualifier was Liquid with the Twitch Drone, which was really effective, surprisingly. We haven't seen anything like that coming out from the stream, but the Monty is completely the polar opposite of what they've been playing so far. So maybe there is something deeper here from the stream. I'm very interested to see how they play around the Monty, but I get the feeling it's just going to be a very default Monty push, but they have to, they feel like they have to do something different here. Yeah, and it is something different to what we've been used to seeing from them. Uh, it's going to allow them to be able to push into the site maybe a little bit more directly. They might not take too much control of upstairs aside from possibly pushing some roamers out purely because they've not got all too much ability to destroy it and that they've not brought a sledge or a book. We will have to see how it comes out. Uno, though, is going to open things up with a kill onto BB, but getting traded straight back out by RX on the Maestro, holding upstairs in armory. So 
two, you know, pretty important picks there. bb has been doing some fantastic work for Vitality and Uno. He's been on fire all evening. That's a big loss early on from Lestream, and especially if you're going to look to try and push the Monty in and have someone like an Ash that's going to be able to play behind him very quickly, peeking in and out. Monty getting very, very aggressive here. It's actually being droned in right now, right? Just use that armor drone ability just to move all the way in and just spot out the Maestro Cam there up in the top of Archive. The stream have really good control right now, but they don't have the Ash to deal with that Maestro Cam. They don't actually have anything to do with the Maestro right now, so this could actually end pretty badly for them considering they can't remove this intel. They're going to have to change up the whole push here because the Maestro is just so powerful. Like you say, they've lost the Ash, they've lost all the ability to deal with it. Maestro hasn't even been brought every round, and I think that's, you know, possibly to a benefit at this point. It's maybe something that Lestream have just overlooked at this point, because as long as Maestro keeps that closed, he's not going to be able to do much, uh, you know, Lestream aren't going to be able to do much about it in terms of destroying it. The best thing to do at this stage would be to push round and maybe try and push Armory Wall. That would possibly give it a little bit of a better angle onto anybody that's playing over in Armory Wall. Exothermic charges are going to be deployed and the site will be opened up for Rise. Still got smoke playing in the bathroom, which is a very dangerous place for, to allow a smoke to be playing. The push is going to have to start coming out soon as we move into the final minute of the round. Still members of the defence upstairs on Vitality. And they're going to want to start trying to redeploy themselves down as this final push comes in. And the utility is going to get thrown out from the stream as they do try to get the plant down. The ki oh, Brady's going to come out with a great kill there onto Alpha Armour, making that a double taking out the Monty as well. Hicks going to trade him out, but it's going to be too late. RxWD going to get the kill onto Hicks. Three versus one now. Aces with it all to do. It's not looking very good for him. 25 seconds left on the clock. The diffuser is not in his hand. It is downstairs outside of Tellers. Castle Barricades are going to slow him down at this point. 15 seconds left. There's not a lot that he's going to be able to do. He's going to have to drop and go for kills. Spark takes him out. That's going to be the end. Vitality with a very good hold of Vents. Are we going to see the comeback here? Potentially. I mean, Vitality playing this a little bit better and they're playing a lot closer together. But Lestream, they're all over the place. They're trying to change up their attacks when I, they really don't need to. Their attacks have been fine so far. I don't know why they're changing their strategy all of a sudden. And you saw the change up in strategy, saw a massive flaw that I don't think Lestream were even thinking about. As you said, the Maestro really hasn't been bought that, brought that much from Vitality. It hasn't been that much of an issue for Lestream. But all of a sudden, when you have nothing to do with it, it becomes a massive issue. Yeah, a huge issue. The, the switch onto the Monty there was essentially what cost them the round. They've switched onto Monty yet again. And BB this time is on the Maestro. Six pick there off onto the book. I, I, I agree with that. I think it's a much better idea. It's, you know, it's a second way of dealing with the evil eyes if your Ash is to fall. You can't sleep on the Maestro cameras that really did win him the round. Yeah, yeah, they did. But I'm kind of surprised there that Vitality didn't try and stick pick onto Illusion at all. Like, there's no reason for them to believe that the Monty isn't being brought again from the stream because it did just get brought. It wasn't necessarily bad. It didn't lose in the round, but it ne didn't necessarily win them the round either. So. They were able to push into sight off the back of it. I'm not sure how Brid got two kills in bathroom. He managed to get one with the shotgun, then he knifed the Monty as the Monty like turned around to try and not expose himself all too much. It was it was a really good play, but for me, I, th I can't help but think the Capital and the Monty have got to come out on top in that engagement. I think what happened is the Capital pushed it behind the Monty, and as he peeked out, he got shotgun blasted, and then there was a crossfire established, and the Monty went down. And then, yeah, it's a smoke at the end of the day as well. The, he's got really good shotgun, and also his utility is really good against Monty in that situation. So, maybe, maybe yes, maybe, you know, it's a 2v1 as well on top of that. Like, you really ought to expect the attacks to come out on top. And, yeah, I think that was a big factor as well in them dealing with that. But, again, if they had the vertical play, he would have been able to play in bathroom that strongly. No, not at all, And but that's something that they would have had if they would have brought the book, maybe, because they would have been able to deal with the Evil Eye and open up a little bit more of the floor. Moving on to this round, we're going to see Customs as a hold now coming out from Vitality. Hicks is going to be allowed to open up the detention wall pretty much for free, just going to be making sure that no one is running out before he does so. I quite like the passport push from this, and I think that a Monty would really help him do that. But as we've said, it can be a little bit difficult to play off, especially if you're not going to be able to take too much upstairs control. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be match point here for the stream. Just one round away from taking their invitational ticket by force. But Vitality are still holding on just by a thread, though. Not looking too good now for Vitality. They have lost quite a lot of control already. But the stream, they're moving much quicker than Vitality, but they're not really contesting much in what they... I mean, they're getting control, right? But they're not really contesting any areas that 
Vitality are actually holding. And if they are, they're kind of just one by one -ing and Uno unable to find the kill just there yet. And the big problem for me is that Uno is on his own here. He's drawing himself in and he's playing just on his own against two. There's not only the Jaeger but Bibu also on the Maestro, both playing in Armoury. And like you say, the push just does seem a little bit split at the minute. I think that if you're going to commit to taking top floor control, you've really got to commit to it with just more than one operator. I think Sledge has maybe gone up there to assist in Rise, but ultimately, it's wasting a lot of time moving into the final minute. Not a lot of control has been gained. Some good drone work's been going on. We've found out a lot of information. But they're going to have to do something with that information now as we come into the final minute. The push has to come. Uno hasn't made that much progress at all at this stage. Yeah, but I don't really think at this point he has to make progress from the armory push. He just has to cut off the rotate completely. But Hicks and Ace is both going to find kills onto the site itself as they try to move in and go for the pants. But it's not going down at all. But Uno gets a kill, but instantly gets traded out by Sneaky. And now it's a 2v4. All the down Sneaky. And Spark's not going to go down just yet, but Spark does take down Uno. And that's a 2v3. They're going to try and recover the Diffuser, but upstairs control is in the hands of Vitality here. As the push just starts to come through from Spark. He instantly needs to go for this retake, but there we go. Habana are going to go down. Sneaky upstairs as well, but has been detected. They know he's up here. This is not looking good. The Diffuser's slowly going to start to do its work as well. Spark needs to start moving up. He needs to start playing with his teammate, but his teammate will go down. He'll go down. Aces with a double kill right at the end. Lustream Esports will take round number 11 and will take their invitational ticket by force. There we go. Good luck in Montreal coming out from Bibu. Good, uh, good sportsmanship. Great sportsmanship there. Really good to see. Um, you know, I think Vitality have understood there that Border has really been a, as close a map as Consulate was. It it almost went down to the wire. I think that Vitality just didn't have a reply for a lot of the things that Lestream were bringing there to the table. Um, you can see there the final scoreline reflected in that. Nine kills for Aces there. Uno